Have I upgraded from the Leica SL to the Leica SL2S? Let's find out. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So last weekend, the awesome guys in the Leica Mayfair store in London kindly let me test the Leica SL2S to see how it compares to my trusty Leica SL camera. Is it time to upgrade? That is the question. So this video will be my first impressions and whether or not I think it's a worthwhile upgrade from the Leica SL to the Leica SL2S for real world testing. And for me, that's portrait. And I also did some street photography as well out in London. I guess to point out for any of you with a keen eye, I did actually test the SL2S in summer of 2021. But at that time I was using the Leica CL and Leica M240 as my own cameras. And I didn't really feel qualified to talk about the Leica SL2S after only using it for a couple of hours. Now after having used the Leica SL as my main camera for it must be getting on close to a year, I can straight away tell a difference between say an SL2, or SL2S or SL you might think. So first off, how do these two cameras look side by side? From the front of the camera, the first thing you'll notice is the SL2S has now got the Leica logo in black font, giving it a much more maybe stealth shooter vibe compared to the white font of the SL. From the top, both the SL and SL2 look extremely similar and I'll come on to that later on in the video. And then from the back of the camera, the SL has got the minimal unlabeled four buttons to each side of the LCD, whereas the SL2S has got the three more standard buttons on the left hand side. Again, I'll cover this at the end. What about spec? I'm not going to cover every feature, but I'll cover some of the main ones. Both of these cameras are 24 megapixel full frame mirrorless cameras which is a lower resolution than the 47 megapixel Leica SL2, which came between the SL and the SL2S. The Leica SL was released in 2015, whereas the SL2S was released in 2021. In terms of weight, the SL weighs 847 grams or 1.86 pounds, whereas the SL2S weighs 931 grams or two pounds. Both cameras take the same battery, and have the same base plate or very similar base plate. I love the quick release design of the battery on the SL type cameras and they've now made it to feature on the M11 also. The best feature for me about the like SL cameras is the viewfinder. The viewfinder is absolutely amazing. It just makes portraits and manual focus so easy. The difference between the SL and the SL2S viewfinder, this is a 0.8 magnification and 4.4 million dots EVF resolution. And the SL2S is 0.78 magnification and 5.76 million dots. And then when it comes to the rear LCD, the LCD of the SL is 1,040 dots and the SL2S is double at 2,100 dots. Talking of the battery, the SL gives you 400 shots per charge and the SL2S gives you 510 shots per charge. Whether that adds up in the real world, I don't know, but that's what this says on paper. And then in terms of the ISO range, I really like the SL because it has a base ISO of ISO 50 compared to say the M240 that I've got, which is ISO 100 and many cameras are ISO 100. Meaning if you're using very fast lenses such as the new Voigtlander Nocton 50 f1, you don't need to use ND filters in very bright conditions. The high ISO of the SL is 50,000 and then the SL2 is 50 to 100,000. Obviously you don't use it quite to the maximum, but, but the high ISO should be one stop better in theory than the the SL. I didn't test it in dark conditions. And then perhaps one deciding factor for some of you, the SL doesn't have image stabilization, but the SL2S has in-body stabilization. That means all lenses, regardless of whether it's a vintage lens or a model lens, you can benefit from the 5.5 stops image stabilization. Personally, because I use a lot of vintage cameras and film cameras, I've never really used image stabilization, even on cameras that have image stabilization. So for me, it's not really a plus, but I know for many of you, you really like that. So that is definitely worth noting. Okay, then with the stats out the way, what is it like in real world testing, having the two cameras side by side in a fast, ish pace photo shoot with a model. On this answer, I was getting completely mixed up with the two cameras. From the top plate, they both, as I say, look the same. And I was switching a Leica autofocus lens and a Voigtland Apo lens between the two cameras. And I'll show you some examples in a second. And so because I was switching lenses, couldn't remember that the Leica lens was on the SL2S or the Apo lens was on the SL or vice versa. So regardless of all the things I just told you stats wise, in reality, they both look exactly the same to the viewfinder. You know, fast paced environment and you're not kind of pixel peeping or looking for differences and I really didn't tell any difference from the usability of the cameras. Let's now take a look at some example photos. And all these photos are shot with the Leica SL2S and the Leica Apo lens because I realised I was using the different lens on the different body so I didn't have any truly comparable side by side shots even though they all pretty much look the same at first glance. So this is me working with Justina and this is Justina taking photos of me 
seeing how easy the autofocus is for someone that's not used to a camera. Uh, you can see the shallow depth field is pretty shallow when you get in close. Uh, all these photos are raw files with my Mr. Lecker black and white preset applied for the portraits and then you'll see some colour photos in a second. Uh, I just prefer black and white for the model stuff. Now here's uh, colour testing. So these are unedited raw files converted into JPEGs with, with no changes to colours or sharpness or anything. The colours looked kind of realistic and lifelike and no complaints in the, in the colour department. Uh, these plant photos are really impressed with how shallow the depth of field was and you can see that the greens from this sensor. Back to black and white now with the same raw plus preset applied. I was doing my photo walk style photography which is a mix of like street photography and then anything else that catches my eye, often some architecture and just using the best light. I'm now offering small group workshops for photo walks, both in London and across Europe. So if you're interested, there are links below if you want to get involved and want to join us for a day. Uh, the autofocus on this lens is about 50-50, so I've included both the hits and the misses. I think for street photography, a like M camera is much better. I will do a separate video on the Leica Summicron SL 50mm f2 and also how it compares to the Voigtlander Apo. That might interest some of you. And so my final thoughts, is it worth getting the Leica SL2S versus the Leica SL? Or what about price? If we bring price into the equation in April 2022, you can now pick up a Leica SL for as little, if you want to call it that, as £1,600. Now for a digital full frame Leica camera, although that's a lot of money, that's very cheap for a digital Leica SL full frame camera. That's less than probably a Leica M240, for example. I'll put eBay links below for both UK, US and a few other countries and see what the prices are in your area. I was seeing the SL listed for around £1,600 and I was seeing the like SL2S listed for around two times more. So around £3,200 to £3,500 used price. If you want to buy the like SL2 new, they cost around £4,250 currently in the UK or around $5,200 say B&H. Again, I can put a link below. In this very simplified first impressions video of the like SL2S, I skip over perhaps many of the benefits that the SL2S gives over the SL. The SL2S is more set up as a video camera in terms of it's got more video functionality than the older SL. But if you want to shoot video, you may be tempted to get something like the Lumix S5 instead that I have. It was rumored that the SL2S, the Sony A7R 3 the Nikon Z6 and the Lumix S5 all have the same sensor. So if you're buying a camera to shoot video, you might be better to actually get a camera set up for video and buy the Lumix S5, the camera that I'm videoing, videoing on at the moment. The main benefit for me is it has a flip out screen so I can see and video at the same time whereas on the ESL cameras obviously there's no flip out screen so that would be a negative if you're doing this type of video work and so my conclusion am I going to buy the like SL2S in 2022 or anytime soon I would say no number one the price difference number two I actually prefer the look of the SL which some people may argue I quite like having a like a logo or the like a white writing and I prefer the buttons on the back, the unmarked four buttons. I think it's a more sleek looking design, maybe more like a like than the, the SL2S. This camera does feel like a tank. And I think at the current price point, the SL is pretty much hard to beat for a first Leica full frame digital setup. If you want image stabilization or if you want a more stealthy Leica and you don't want to have to tape up your Leica writing, then the SL2S may be the perfect camera for you. I know one of my long term patrons just bought the SL2S instead of the Leica M11, for example, and he's extremely happy with the camera. And so, with that said, a massive thanks to Leica Mayfair for letting me test this camera. The SL2 is an amazing camera, but because I've already got the SL, I'm probably going to stick with this for a little bit longer. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and feel free to hit subscribe if you want to see my review of the Leica Summicron SL 50mm F2, which will also follow. Can it beat the Voigtland Apo? That is the question. Lastly, a massive thanks to my awesome patrons. Enjoy the rest of the day and see you in the next video. Bye.